Save 15% off your order through Safari site using my exclusive coupon code DINOSCREEN. Link is in the description of this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and look what we have here. The newest addition to Safari Limited's prehistoric world line, this minty fresh Albertosaurus. I want to give a huge thank you for Safari for sending me out this production sample. Uh, it's an honor to do this because, you know, Safari has been a part of my life ever since I was a little kid with the Carnegie collection. And to finally be revealing a figure on this channel all these years later is kind of a big deal to me. So yeah, I'm kind of a little bit giddy over this figure. Uh, I've had it actually for probably over three weeks now. And I knew which one I was getting, but I did not know what it looked like until I received it. And when I took it out of the shipping box, uh, yeah, I was really excited. This is a great, great looking Albertosaurus. I've been wanting this species to add to my collection. Uh, it's nice to see an update because uh, I think the last Albertosaurus uh, was from their Car Carnegie Collection days. And unfortunately, I don't have that figure. And I was thinking about picking it up for uh, the review uh, comparison portion of this video. But that thing is going for ridiculous amounts of money. So yeah, I'm happy to finally have an Alberta in my collection. You know, that's not a Mattel one. <laughs> Now this figure will be available soon from Safari and when it is, you can just pop on down in the description of this video and I'll have a link to Safari's site when it is available to order. So let's throw this thing up on the turntable and start this review. And let's start with a nice 360 degree view of the Albertosaurus. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful looking figure. It's nice to see Safari going back and giving us updated version of the older Carnegie Collection counterparts. I don't think there's much left uh, for them to update. I think maybe Myasaura. So it's really nice to see them scratch Albertosaurus off the list. And I've been wanting a definitive Albertosaurus to my collection. There's really not many uh, figures of this species out there. And it's such a well-known Tyrannosaur. There's over, over 30 specimens known of this animal from most age groups. So there's a lot that we know about this particular species. Now there's only one species of Albertosaurus, Albertosaurus sarcophagus. Uh, some paleontologists do consider Gorgosaurus libratus uh, to also be a subspecies of Albertosaurus, but I think they're different enough to be considered two separate species. Now, Albertosaurus is from the late Cretaceous of, you guessed it, Alberta, Canada, and possibly it could be from Mexico, but those uh, specimens have yet to be described. And let's talk about the paint job on this figure. I love it. I love the mint green mixed in with all the brown. It really breaks up the profile of the figure. It might be a little bit too bright for uh, some collectors, but I like brightly colored dinosaur figures, so I am just absolutely enjoying the color scheme on it. And I think Doug Watson did an absolute fantastic job sculpting it. Uh, I didn't have to look it up to see if he did this figure because I can tell by the feet if you have a Doug Watson sculpted theropod figure from Safari. Uh, it's pretty much his uh, calling card. Love his work uh, that he's done with Safari over the years. And this is another great figure from him. And now for some quick measurements. If you measure this figure all the way along the curve of the tail, it's about 10 and a half inches long and about three and a half inches tall to the top of the neck. So Albertosaurus uh, averages between 26 and 30 feet long. So I'll put this figure nicely in the 130 to the 135 scale range. And I know a lot of collectors collect 135 scale. So this thing's gonna fit nicely in a lot of people's collections. And let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with this beautiful head sculpt. The whole head is painted a light brown color and you have some nice dry brushing of a darker brown around the orbit and the top of the head. You see no shrink wrapping at all in this figure. You can't make out the finestra or the orbit. And let's take a look at the eye. The eye is painted a bright blue with a black pupil. I love blue eyes on dinosaurs. I always find it very striking. It always puts a smile on my face when I see a figure with those baby blue eyes. Going down to the nostril, you can see it picked out in black paint. You can see the figure does have lips. We do have some large scales running on the edges of the upper and lower jaws. The teeth are recessed in the gums. I think Doug uses uh, like tagos and monitor lizards uh, when he sculpts the teeth of these figures. Uh, you know, Albertosaurus had very large teeth, but you know, in all those gum tissue, it does hide them pretty well. And I've worked with reptiles uh, pretty much my whole life. And I have worked with monitor lizards, and, you know, when they open their mouths, you really don't see too many teeth, but trust me, they are there and they are in the gums and they hurt a lot. 
can see the gum over here is the same brown coloration uh, as the rest of the head. I kind of wish that was picked out a little bit of pink paint just to kind of, you know, break that up. But it's really not a big deal. And then looking inside the mouth, you do have a nice, nice throat cavity sculpted. It looks like it goes on forever and can't really see it. There are, I think those are nasal passages uh, in the back over there sculpted in. You do have some nice glossy paint in there to give it that wet look. And then on the top of the head, you do have the uh, head crest of Albertosaurus. And here is a view from the top. And here is a view from the front. So it does have that binocular vision. And then going down to the neck, this is where we get into that bright green uh, minty coloration. Like I said, some people might find it too vivid, but I like it. All this brown paint, breaks up that pattern and I can see this definitely being a color on an ambush predator. Now if you put this in a natural background, it's probably gonna blend in. All that brown is gonna break up the silhouette of the animal. For the underside of the neck, you do have some nice white paint. You know, there's a lot of nice scale variation all over this figure. Just a great job of texturing going down to the very puny forearms. The hand claws are painted in black paint. And then going down to the main body of more nice scale details. It has a very Love the fine texturing of all the scales. Going down to the thighs, some nice folds and wrinkles. Very muscular looking thigh. And here it is from the top. You have a nice barrel shaped chest. You can see the hips just a little bit over here. And then going down to the knees, it transitions more into brown. They have that minty green striping. And then getting down to the feet, classic Doug Watson theropod feet. I love the look of that. Toe claws are picked out in black paint. You can see the dew claw on this side is also decked out in black and then turn the figure over we have a very very nice cloaca slit which was just a tiny bit of black paint in there to pick it out but it's really not that bad some more fine scale detail at the base of the tail and let's look at the tail from the top a uh, nice very very thick muscular looking tail base you have that mint and brown going all the way down to the very very tip of the tail so all in all this is just an absolutely beautiful looking Alberta Soros figure. I am quite happy with it. I have really nothing to complain about. I think a lot of people are going to be happy with this figure when they get it in their hands. And first up for comparisons, here it is with the Mattel Jurassic World Alberta Soros. I'm sure if you collect this line, you probably have at least one of two of uh, this figure in your collection. It's really the only Alberta Soros I had until the Safari one came along. It feels really good to finally add a definitive version of a species into my collection. And next up here is Papo's Gorgosaurus. You can see there, you know, kind of similar. You know, some paleontologists still consider Gorgosaurus to be a uh, different species of Albertosaurus, but I think they're different enough to be uh, considered two different species. And maybe someday in the near future, uh, Safari can give us their version of Gorgosaurus. And let's get the PNSO Tyrannosaur comparisons out of the way early before we move on to Safari's comparisons. Here it is with PNSO's Tyrannosaurus Rex. And next up, here it is with their Tarbosaurus. And lastly, for PNSO, here it is with their awesome looking Jutung Tyrannus. And next up here is an assortment of Safari's Tyrannosaurus that they produced over the last few years. Up here we have their Feathered T-Rex and the Dino Dana version. I still consider uh, this first release uh, Feathered Rex one of the best dinosaur figures Safari has ever put out. Truly, this thing is really a masterpiece. It's still like blown away by the price of it and the bulk and all the paint apps and details on that Rex. And over here we have Eutyrannus, Chinsusaurus, and last year's Despletosaurus. And let's pull some of these figures down and compare them next to the Albertosaurus. Uh, you know, it's nice to see Albertosaurus and Despletosaurus displayed next to each other. I kind of wish the sizes between these two figures were swapped. Despletosaurus was a much more heavily built animal than Albertosaurus. I feel like it just feels a little bit too small next to their current Alberta, but it's really not that big of a deal. And next up is the Chinsusaurus, which a figure I did quite enjoy. And next up is their feathered Eutyrannus. And lastly, here is the big Mamma Jamma. Here is Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see just how much 
bigger and bulkier. You know, Tyrannosaurus evolved right up into the end of the Cretaceous. Like, T-Rex truly was an absolute beast. And lastly, for comparisons, this is a horseshoe canyon formation group shot. These are all species of dinosaurs that coexisted with Albertosaurus. Up here, we have Safari's Edmontosaurus, their old wild Safari Hypacrosaurus. Up here is the Batat uh, Euoplocephalus, which is subbed in for uh, Anodontosaurus, which they are very closely related species. And now here is Safari's Pachyrhinosaurus. And in the back over here is Batat's original Edmontonia. Now you know why I picked up that figure. It's all for this group shot. Still need a few more species to fill out, you know, this formation. I, I like doing formation group shots like this. It gives everyone a good idea of, you know, what dinosaurs lived alongside each other. And, you know, their safaris and Montosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus go great uh, with the Albertosaurus, even though this Pachyrhinosaurus is based off the species Lacustae. There's a couple other species of Pachyrhinosaurus, and I'd love to see uh, those other species get some attention. Uh, the species that lived alongside Albertosaurus was uh, Canadensis. It did not have like this ornamentation. In the front, there was a couple small anatomical differences uh, with the uh, Canadensis species. So hopefully someday we get some more Pachyrhinosaurus species uh, from Safari or uh, you know any other companies. And let's just move it to the side. So you can see the Ed uh, Edmontonia next to it. And let's move down the you know. Anodontosaurus, and here is the old Hypacrosaurus. Let's move that over to the side a little bit. And lastly, here it is with the Edmontosaurus. And I would love for Safari or anyone to make a Sorolophus. It's one of my favorite Hadrosaur figures, and there's like barely, barely any you know figures of that species. I hope someone someday just you know grants my wish and makes me a Sorolophus figure. It's seriously been a top one of mine for like ever now. So final thoughts on Safari's Albertosaurus. I think this figure turned out fantastic. Really capture how agile this species of Tyrannosaur was. It's sculpted in a nice accurate pose. It balances really, really well. Like I said, I've had this figure for at least a few weeks now and it's been sitting on my shelf and uh, no warping issues and all around just a great figure. I really like the color scheme. I just love that bright mint green mixed in with the brown. I can see some people have an issue with that with, you know, dinosaurs with, you know, their bright vivid colors. Personally, uh, I like that sort of thing. Plus, this figure pairs really well with Safari's Edmontosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus. It's always fun to display species that coexisted with each other. And shameless plug, if you'd like to add any of those figures to your collection, use my exclusive coupon code DINOSCREAM anytime on Safari's site to save 15% off your order. So that will do it for this review. Big thank you again for Safari for allowing me to reveal this figure for everyone. Hope you all enjoyed it. And just in case if you missed any of the other reveals this week, I'll leave links to Andy's Dinosaur Review and Spino Dudes at the end of the video and also links down in the description. And also check out Dino Ixel's Instagram account. He took some great pictures of these figures if you want to see more high quality images of all the reveals this week. So that will do it. As always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.